you're working with an artist, Amy, and you're starting to crack the code on what their brand can start to look like. Now that once they start to have that brand, what are some tips you like to give for promoting that new brand that they've, or maybe not a new, but they shined it up. They've got a nice shiny new brand. What are some tips that you like to say to, hey, okay, now that you have this, here's how you promote it. Very good question. So, well, the first thing is to start out with a with a strategy, right? What kind of content are you going to be putting out to showcase this uh, side of you or that side of you? And, and there's um, a whole little process that I take the artists with um, through that journey. Uh, so coming up with a content strategy. And then secondly, um, knowing um, what, what, what posting schedule they can really um, take on because I know as as a creative, it's very difficult to post consistently. I've been on that side as an artist, and I feel like I feel like if there's some sort of commitment artists can make at the very beginning of posting content um, and sticking with it, I think they'll they'll be successful. Uh, of course, I think really helping uh, that really helps is uh, creating engagement with. Uh, their community consistently. So one of the, one of my pet peeves, I'll tell you guys, is seeing when a follower responds very positively to a piece of content they've seen, and there's just a like. There's no response back saying thank you so much for that. That really brightened up my day. It goes a long way. It goes a long way when we're trying to create trust and loyal loyalty. So I think those are my three most important steps when we talk about showing up consistently and, and now using their, their brand identity to, to create the content. Um, in the work that I do also, we, we do a lot of uh, deciding what colors to use and also uh, the brand words. That's also very important um, at the very beginning of the, of the process. Uh, when you show up, you want to make sure that you're checking off each one of these brand words, that this is who you are and this is the authentic uh, version of you that will show up in each piece of content. Um, knowing how you want your audience to feel is also very important as well. Keeping that consistent. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. Because it's all about the audience. It and is. Especially if you can make content that the audience of your audience likes. Because then when I see something cool, I'm gonna say, hey, James, check this out. Hey, Amy, look at this. Now yeah. I'm sharing this content just because I know my audience either finds it interesting or whatever. Right, um, right. That's a big one. You just mentioned the shareability, right? Oh, You're yeah. sharing something because it wasn't, it wasn't just um, specific i mean there's a lot of a lot of it that's specific to the artist but this there's something about it that was so irresistible that you had to let somebody else know so that that comes in different forms right it could be a beam it could be uh i don't know so many other things we could talk about that off off the off the podcast right. yeah <laughs> just dm uh, me <laughs> we'll talk about your your content strategy but yeah yeah, we always like to tell artists like they think consistency in releasing music is enough where you're saying the same type of thing. You have to be consistent in all aspects. Um, we I use the example of you're running a pizza place. You don't release a new type of pizza every week if no one's coming to your store. You have to continuously run ads and work on your brand to get people to give you a chance. And maybe once you start getting those people to give you a chance, you can release something new every week to get them back get them interested, um, keep them coming. But until you actually have people coming to your store, there's no need to offer more goods. And that's what music is to these artists. And if you are not releasing on Instagram, promoting yourself on Instagram, Facebook, talking to your fans, DMing anyone who follows you and thanking them, small things you can do when you are small, you won't get that chance to grow. And you won't get those hardcore fans. Um, Elliot likes to say like, Someone like Currency can release a song and he has fans. It's not going to chart. It's not going to go top 10 like Jack Harlow of Baby, but he will make money. He will make a profit and he can live comfortably with his music. Mm, yeah, so true. So true. Currency has a great brand. 
Um, I was going to say, so yeah, one thing that's really important is like, you're never, as an artist, you're never too big to say thanks. <laughs> and a lot of people who like are at the beginning of their music business and like, even if they're talented, like, oh, I'm not going to say thanks to the people who support me on Instagram. It's like, you know, it's this weird ego thing where I'm like, actually, you know, like this is a good look and it entices more people to engage with your content because they'll think he'll say thanks to me too. Like, I just don't, I don't get Tell it. the story about you when you were an artist. Which one? And then your, local, your local fans started to support you or your friends. Oh, oh yeah. My, so I grew up in a small town in the middle of nowhere and um, in New Hampshire. So, <laughs> and uh, when I was like 18, my friend and I made music and like no one in town gave a shit. And it was like decent music. And then we went to college and no one knew Elliot. They just would hear the music and judge it as an artist instead of like, oh, Elliot, Elliot's making music now. They just heard this album and they were like, hey, this is pretty good. So like we started getting a couple hundred thousand hits on YouTube or something. So it wasn't like crazy, but like coming from a small town in New Hampshire to from having like zero streams and like three months later having like 500,000, like we thought we were like, it was cool. And what we noticed, yeah, it was our, and this was a long time ago. Um, But uh, what we noticed was when we left our, like our small town, or if you're in your neighborhood, and if you can get a buzz somewhere else, and now a bunch of people are kind of talking about you or sharing their song or like whatever, now all those people who have been looking and kind of not doing anything, not supporting or not giving a shit at all all of a sudden are really interested because other people have like created this validation of, Oh, wait a minute. That many people checked out James's new song. Oh, maybe I'll, I guess I'll check it out. Click. And that is all visible. So even if it's, you get three comments from random people on your post that say, Hey, this was really cool. Thank them. (laughs) because <laughs> then other maybe that it turns into five comments and 12 and 30 and if all of a sudden those people who are kind of paying attention but not really are seeing that a lot of people are engaging with you all of a sudden now it's really cool to know james because i've known him for so long wow i've been supporting you since day one and it's like they're full of shit but like now it's cool to be supporting james when they absolutely. could have the whole time absolutely i feel like you know <laughs> you want to treat people like as if they're coming into your house when they come to your page. So how would you treat them? Would you treat them nicely? Would you, would you serve them? And I think those, the answers to that are generally yes. And so I always try to tell artists right away. And, and so not, not just thank them and say something really kind for, for stopping by and saying something nice about your music or your content, but, but responding quickly. I think that's really key as well making sure you're not spending four or five months and, <laughs> and then remembering later. Uh, but if that does happen, because sometimes we can miss a comment. I mean, it happens yeah. to me often too. So if that does happen and you notice, right? Oh my gosh, just saw this. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate you so much. And then DM them or something, you know, maybe right. go the extra mile to really create that connection uh, with that, with that particular mm-hmm. follower. I I might even, I would use the same example and I would just change it from house to store because I don't want anyone coming to my house. Leave me alone. (laughs) But if I have a store and I'm purposefully (laughs) trying to sell shit, when they come in the door, what am I going to be? An ass? Oh, thank you so much for coming. You want to, you came and checked out my stuff and you're considering buying something. How can I help? Don't come to my house, but thank (laughs) Thanks for coming to my store. I have this store to sell stuff. Right. Don't be mad that customers are here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that human connection is lost a lot in social media. And I think it's time to bring that back. And we have that. We're interesting. Artists are interesting people. And in general, we are, we are most of the time the opposite of what we show on, on Insta. So... I think it's really important to keep that consistency offline and online, right? Right. Well, yeah. And if you, 
being your true self and being authentic is the easiest way to stay consistent because you won't yeah. be caught off guard if yeah. you know. Right.